Okay, cool. Thank you so much. All right. Action. One, two, three. It's the podcast. You got Zeke here. You got Andrea from Full Moon Rising Bakery. We've had it around before. How you doing, Andrea? Pretty good. Pretty cool. excited. Cool. Hey, so good things at the bakery. I hear a lot around town. People are loving it. You got these nice little stickers that you can pass out. You can put them anywhere you want on your guitar, on your coffee, cover up other corporate businesses that aren't our sponsors. You uh, sponsored the Battle of the Bands. Oh, right, right, right. And Definitely. All about local music. People were there talking about Full Moon Rising Bakery like crazy. Do you ever talk to those guys uh, that won the prize? I Yeah, I'm still, well, I, they added me on Facebook. I'm still waiting to hear from them, but they definitely got some... Baker's waiting for them. Their mouths are just ready. tingling, man. So uh, what what else is new with uh, the shop? Anything these days? Yeah, well, um, it's pretty exciting. Actually, we've been open at the Chautauqua Institution for the um, past couple months for the Winter Festival, which was really fun. The Winter, Winter Festival is officially over, but now we are still open there while we get ready to have our, uh, our new shop open. Which wait, your new what? Our new, new what? Wait a our second. New shop. Breaking news right here. Go ahead, tell the camera what's going on. The moment you've all been waiting for almost. Um, we officially signed our lease. We're going to be uh, at 320 Cherry Street, which some of you might remember Almighty Tattoo, which is it's that spot right there, right next to the Cherry Lounge. We're going to be the cherry on top of Cherry Street. We're not changing our name. Don't get worried, guys. Still full moon rising <laughs> bakery. But in case you forget where we are. We're the cherry on top of Cherry Street. Hopefully we'll be open in a, a month or two. We have a lot of work to do. So all the orders in the meantime, keep them coming because we're still open at the institution to fill all your baked good needs. Um, but we're pretty excited. Um, but even more exciting news, it's not just going to be a bakery. Wait, wait, wait. What else you got in tap? Well, there's a severe lack of late night food in Jamestown and we want to bring it to the people. I know That's a lot missing. of drunk people that would agree with that statement. Right, right. So we're going to bring the late night food back to Jamestown because we used to have oh, so yeah. many cool places. So yeah. we are going to have bagels, bagel sandwiches. Everyone misses the bagel company. Hell yeah. Don't have to miss it anymore. Just come see us. We're going to have... You guys' stuff is better anyway. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We're going to have um, a really fun late night menu for you on, as well as always our baked goods. Um, and we're gonna have some pretty late hours. So even after you're done at the bar, you can come check it out. Is it gonna be just weekends or weekdays or what's the plan? We're gonna probably start slow at first um, and just do the main um, nights like Thursday, Friday, Saturday for the late night food. And if you guys keep us busy, we'll open longer, you know? Supply and demand, um, but we're really excited about it. Uh, everyone wants breakfast all night long, things like that. We're gonna have a lot of good stuff for you, so. That's awesome, you know. What were we gonna say? Oh, also, we just we are excited to include uh, music, local music down there too. We'll have a space for uh, musicians to come and play. Not a big space, but a small, uh, cozy little environment. I think it'll be fun. You know, some local businesses are playing checkers, but Full Moon Rising Bakery is playing chess, <laughs> covering from all angles. Now, I love how you do special orders on the fly. When we had the Peterson vs. Wittruck, um press conference before the big fight, yeah. you had those special order cookies, and I gotta tell you, they were perfect. They really let the guys know what I think of them from my heart, mm. and I can't think of a better place. I thank you so much for those cookies. Thank they were you. Great. Thank you. We're all about custom orders. That's definitely uh, our, our, our number one thing. That's where we started. So if you want custom orders, we will pretty much make you whatever you want. <laughs> What's like... Last couple months, what's the strangest thing that you've just knocked right out of the park? Like, what isn't a thing? Probably your order. Um, <laughs> but we probably... Cue we, the picture right there. <laughs> we do more of those kinds of baked goods than you would think, though. A lot yeah. of people a lot of people have bachelorette parties and special fun parties they need those things for. We'll make whatever you want, honestly. Dick is in. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Just doing what we can for the people. <laughs> <laughs> so, Full Moon Rising Bakery... Move into Cherry Cherry Street. 320 Cherry Street, right at the top. The Cherry on Cherry. Uh, when's that going down? Um, hopefully, uh, the next. Hopefully, like two months. Within We're, the next two months. Yeah. Yep. From today, which is uh, January, January 10th. 10th. We'll be back when we're ready. We'll announce our grand opening. Don't cool. worry, you guys will be invited. 
and you'll be looking for local musicians too. Mm -hmm. So if you're an acoustic musician, hit Andrea up at the Full Moon Rising Bakery. Our sweet treats will send you to the moon. Thank you so much. Thank you. One, two, three, we out. <laughs> One, two, three, it's a podcast. Here are my man Mickey Gertz. Mickey, good to see you, dude. Good to see you, brother. It's been a while. So me and Mickey used to play music back in the day when I was like in one of my first bands. No, my very first band that played out in town, We Got Wood. Mickey would come share her sets with us and like, you know, go back and forth. What? It's been a while. What you been up to, dude? It's been a dude? while, man. You been traveling? Uh, I traveled, uh... I traveled a little bit but uh mostly working i've been uh busting my ass the past five years dedicated to uh, a restaurant project in el paso texas uh, i started a pizzeria with my ex-girlfriend uh geez about 2011 she opened up i came in like a month later uh we developed the concept together uh i had a successful two and a half years and moved on to downtown el paso where we developed a classic pizzeria and one of the oldest, uh, most of the his historic hotels in El Paso. Um, it was uh, just like my favorite work I've ever done. It kind of took me away from home for a while as far as 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 far as attention goes, but um, yeah, no, it, was, it was really rewarding. I learned a lot from it. Um, and but recently I moved to Phoenix, Arizona to hang out with my family, uh, work with another buddy on one of his projects, uh, and I'm uh, just kind of uh, moving on to some open space right now coming home a lot more often and looking for ways to get back involved with Jamestown in a constructive and productive manner. So. All right, well, before we get too deep, let's keep it shallow for a minute. Sure. sure. <laughs> ran a pizza, ran a uh, fancy pizzeria, it sounds like. It, it's, uh, I mean, it's Napolitan. Uh, we call it the pizza joint, uh, college-esque. So uh, you, know, you have a full chalkboard on the wall to draw on, a whole art gallery, live music. I hosted an uh, open mic for five years in a row every Wednesday, um, rain or shine. I mean, I have a lot of snow in El Paso, so. Uh, but really rewarding. Um, I got to meet so many people, work with so many artists, uh, musical uh, and visual, and it's just, uh, I, I can't tell you how much I learned from it all. Uh, yeah, being away that, uh, being away from home and uh, that long just was, uh, for sure, it was, a, it was a little ridiculous, and I definitely had to sink my teeth into something big. Sink it Think, talking about sinking your teeth in pizza. Okay, <laughs> so what is all right? So for you, just your preference. You're building the perfect pizza. Start from what kind of crust are we using? Oh, easy. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm gonna call okay. it in. I like I like a, a pizza large slice you can fold in half. So you wanna you like your classic New York style. It's a you know Thin. soft enough. Well, but enough where it's gonna hold the weight if you fold it in half and right. you know, put it in your mouth. Uh, but with a, a nice Italian uh, style, like uh, sauce, as far as a classic, uh, you know, I use my grandmother's recipe to be honest. Uh, nice uh, provolone, um, part skin, cheese blend. Okay. If we're gonna, if we're gonna get down to it. Yeah. We're, um, we're making the perfect. We're, we're gonna get down to it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I like all sorts of things on my pizza, really. Uh, but I'm a cheese guy, so. That's that's pretty much where I stop. My rule of thumb whenever I go around and research other pizzerias is try the plain, try the regular, just see where that's at. I'll, I'll know everything about their pizzeria by how they treat a cheese piece of pizza. So Right, and I'll, then the rest is pretty much up to preference of the individual is what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely, but by the uh, quality of the, the ingredients they're using for those basic components, yeah. you know what kind of vegetables, what kind of meats they're going to be using. You know, they're not going to half-ass the basics and then just throw crap on top of it's it. It's either legit or it's yeah, not. Yeah, exactly. So the cheese is always the, the test. Um, I prefer a, a brick oven if possible. I don't like the rotaries. Mm -hmm. uh, um, a lot of people do. They get that little crispiness of the pepperoni on top. Yeah, but yeah I like a classic brick oven. Uh, but yeah, for sure. Pizza. Pizza life. Cool, man. But, yeah. Now, I... <laughs> how... how, how how, can I dig deep? Can I get psychological? Oh, Even in it. front of the fan base? Yeah. I, I, the, okay, so you and your girlfriend, you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, see, I haven't talked to you in a long yeah, time. Yeah, I know. So what happened? What happened? She, she, start, what happened? she started uh, the, the restaurant with one of her best friends. We met each other at Coachella. It was an incredibly cute story for another podcast. No, no, no. Well, no, save it. We'll save it for the okay. Coachella podcast. Okay, you know, okay. Save it for the Coachella uh, podcast. Okay. No, but, uh, um, 
So we fell in and she was really new to the business. I had been doing a lot of work um, in El Paso uh, promoting shows, uh, managing cafes and restaurants, and I just had a really good end to the culture that El Paso was offering at the time. So she uh, really wasn't as connected in those ways. So we teamed up and uh, as far as our marketing approach went and built it upward from there. Uh, we went within our first year, uh, we won second best pizza in El Paso within the, you know, the, the biggest, uh, I guess, ratings competition you could have there. And uh, within four years, I mean, we are winning a best vegetarian uh, pizza, best vegan pizza, you know, compliments for the wings. If you say anything, I brought my wing recipe out there. From from, bu Absolutely. from the uh, from 716. Bu from Buffalo Street Extension. <laughs> from my neck of the woods. We're talking about a, a fry daddy, a little fryer, and just being a little kid messing around with wing flavors. So, yeah, no, I mean, it all came out with it. and uh, It's a birthright from this area. If you're from the area, yeah. it's kind of a birthright. Yeah. And that sounds like a fatty thing to say, but I'm going to say it probably. Oh, man. What's up? It's, it's, My you wingies. Uh, you know, other people try to do it, but yeah. there's just something about somebody that's been growing up with it their whole life, and they just know how to do it right. So, listen. <clears throat> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dive right it in. Just I'm just gonna in, go dive right in. in. Man, yeah. So you met a girl. I met a girl. You barely knew her. You moved to where she's at, or you were in the same. No, we were, we're, I literally my my house was a block and a half. I lived right yeah, off. Yeah, y'all didn't know each other. We and that's the strange thing is like we had a lot of mutual friends, but we'd never run into each other. So this is gonna be great. I hope she hears this because she just got engaged. Oh, <laughs> it digs deep. It digs deep. No, it doesn't though. You can, it doesn't. You can, You're you good. Can, you can tell like how. You're good. Torn up, I am about this. We'll save it for the. <laughs> we'll save it. We'll save it for the emotional podcast. You know. So anyways. So anyways. You guys find out. I want to just dig in a little bit. Yeah. I, I want to dig in a little bit. You find out, shit, we've been living a few blocks away from each other. Are into Coachella, pizza, business. We're into a lot of the same things. We know the same people. How we never even met? It's fucking serendipity. It was. You start ha hanging out, and then boom, things get hot and heavy right from Jump Street. Right, right from Coachella. You guys had sex at Coachella? At Coachella. Oh, you guys had sex at Coachella. Ten sex. Ten sex. Ten sex. Sex. Ten and sex. how old are you, Mickey? Uh, 30. I just turned 35. She older or younger? She's younger by a year and a half. No, oh, pretty close in age. Yeah. Okay. No, I, no, I'm not a creep. Toy? Toy? Doof. Oh, damn. All right. Of course. All right. Yeah. <laughs> quite tight, quite tight yourself. Hey, you know, quite it, tight yourself. I, I, I had to do something What's this that? year. What's that? What's that? Oh, you got some. Oh, yeah. Of course, she saw his tattoo at Coachella. Was like, oh no, I, I, I got this sweet. with her. Oh, oh. Yeah. I did, I did, I stole her heart by playing ukulele, though. I bet. I did. So you've been focusing more on ukulele and not guitar. Yeah, uh, it just kind of came down to the simplicity of wanting to embrace uh, songwriting and not having to get too complicated with the instrument. Uh, I was doing so much work at the time. I wanted to develop a consistent set uh, week to week for my open mic. And so ukulele was just kind of trending at the time. It was really simple. She had one hanging around from her time in uh, Hawaii. And I picked it up real easy and uh, I've been playing. You, you know, haven't seen this, seen this lady's name. What's her name? Who's that? Your ex girlfriend. Oh, um, no. Yeah. I don't know how we keep on talking about it. Listen, because, <laughs> because I have, because we were close friends. I haven't seen this guy in years. It's obviously <laughs> something that's really important. All right, back to the story. No, it's, it's, this and is, you keep saying, you keep saying, I keep saying ukulele, but you keep saying ukulele. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the correct pronunciation. Ukulele? Yeah, yeah, ukulele. I'm gonna go with it. Ukulele. <laughs> ukulele. <laughs> All right. So, anyways. So, anyways, you guys get hot and heavy at Coachella. Things seem serendipitous. It yeah. almost seems like fate. Yeah. You start working in business together. Very soon thereafter, as in with the relationship, did you live together? Yeah. Oh well, after uh, it wasn't until uh, a couple years after, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, did. Did the pressures of business intertwined with the relationship, is that what caused the downfall or was it something else? Oh yeah, for the most part, yeah. I mean, just being around the same person for every aspect of life, be it work, is as intense as the work situation as that was. Um, you know, I hope I hope y'all are taking something from this. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not impossible. No, it's, it's not. It's impossible. not. But you really have to have the right structure. Uh, you have to go into it uh, at an even keel. Um, at that point in time, we were, you know, doing a lot of festival uh, touring and just, you know, hanging out late night and still trying to be responsible. So, uh, you know, 
the physical demand as well as just the pressures of four years of working day in and out with each other. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that'll wear down on it. There's nothing you can do about it either. It's, it's, it's a rough, rough And how long ago venture. did that come to an end? Uh, about two and a half years ago. Two and a half years. Yeah, yeah. And how long have you been living in Phoenix? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. What I, I, do you I, like? <laughs> what What about Phoenix? What about Phoenix gets you going that you like, that you like to feel? What about the vibe is it? Uh, you know, it's got a great culinary scene. Um, see, Phoenix is... So you're still in the culinary business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I cook all the time. I'm, right now I'm developing a concept for a couple food trucks, uh, concepts for a couple food trucks. Um, but yeah, no, I love Phoenix. It's it's great. Um, uh, there's good music scene there. The thing about Phoenix is it's like LA way back in the day. Right now, Phoenix is the fifth biggest city in the nation, but it's all kind of separated. And you know, over the years, it's been growing closer together. But all the scenes are a little bit scattered, and uh, the law is pretty rough out there. So not a lot of people. You're not gonna get all fucked up and like drive around town to like go to a show. It's, it's reserved. It's it's conservative. It, not anymore. It used to be. The thing is with Phoenix is there's so much young money there now. Uh, huh. I mean, you have to think. I mean, you've had the snowbird culture there forever and that old culture, that old conservative culture. We just uh, almost passed uh, recreational marijuana. The vote was like 49-51%. Just to give you an idea like where we are as far as like... Uh, it almost state. passed. It almost passed. Yeah, we're medicinal. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, there's a lot of liberal uh, values there, if you want to you know, refer to it that way. But Phoenix is great because it's being a big city that it is, it provides an opportunity to go in a low cost of living and, you know, dip your feet into something that maybe hasn't been done. You know, it's been done in other cities uh, culturally, but because Phoenix is such a young metropolis, it just hasn't really got there. The ideas really haven't formed yet. So, I mean, now with like, yeah, the younger generations coming up and with all these new restaurants and venues coming out, it's just, it's becoming really neat. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. There's always something to do. Uh, always good people. Uh, it's hot as fuck, like it's honestly. It's hot as fuck, right? Oh my God, it's just been ridiculous. There was like, we, we get at least a week of a year where it is, it'll go over 110 degrees yeah. consistently every single day. And like every year I've been there, we've reached a higher uh, temperature. It's like 100, 121 last year. It was just stupid. It's just like, oh, it'll melt your brain. Hey, so, so, so if you were buying stock in an Arizona company, air conditioners perhaps. Oh, or, or pools. Yeah, I've never pool. seen, I've never seen like a city where so many people have a pool. Yeah. You can use it year round. I mean, you, you, really, you really don't have to shut it down either. So it's a lot easier to maintain. Yeah, but no, for sure. Everybody got pools. Rich people, poor people. Everybody's got pools. Everybody's got a pool. Cool, man. So you've been living in Arizona. Yep. Into the culinary still, still in the music. Yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've been helping a buddy out with his, uh, he has a gourmet frozen yogurt shop. He wanted to transition into coffees. Uh, so I came in and we've been working on his branding and his uh, connection with the locality. Uh, just business development as far as like taking what he had established by himself and just kind of filling in the blanks with things that I've learned along the way. So that lasted about two and a half years and I just finished that up about a week and a half ago and I couldn't be happier to be done with it. So you're, you're looking for the next venture? Yeah, yeah, I'm like really, I'm excited to get back into doing my own thing. Uh, before the pizzeria, I had a publication and a website called high915.com. Uh, so essentially it just uh, it was an extension of all my promotion and putting shows together and being involved with the scene and uh, Kind of inspired from my time in Austin where they've got you know do 512 and websites that out that whatever you log in So you, you know, had your own you know everything going on, you know what food specials are going on where the drink specials are and where all the shows are you're Just like there's no question whatsoever. You're always gonna have a connection to it if you get it fired back up, I'll uh, do a segment for you, like uh, a blog about whatever show I just saw in Jamestown. I love it. <laughs> it's, uh, I've, I've thought about it before. The Facebook still exists under local administrators, but just being as detached as I am from the scene, it's just not really, it's not, I, I just, it, I wouldn't be doing it any injustice at this point in time. And given like the amount of work versus the reward, it was, it was great. Uh, and it opened a lot of doors, but it just, uh, yeah. It was a lot, uh, the pizzeria moving into that just was a lot more feasible and 
could put my hands on it and just uh, could see results a lot quicker. <laughs> so two and a half years plus five years is seven and a half years. Seven and a half years, last, the last seven and a half years of your life, you've been very delved deep into the food industry. Yeah, food and entertainment for sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, I've had, uh, had my dick in. Where? Let's go a little further back in time because, you know. So before you started with that pizza joint, what was Mick up to before that? Yeah, promoting shows uh, and, you know, managing restaurants. Uh, so I managed a little cafe called Q8. It was owned by some Kuwaitis. Uh, it was, that was really unique. I say one of my favorite memories there is uh, when they showed the Saddam Hussein uh, execution. I'm in a cafe full of Kuwaitis. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. And putting it on every TV, like, just going nuts. <laughs> it was like the Super Bowl. Yeah, it was like the Super Bowl, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that shit. It's like the uh, scene from The Dictator where he goes into the restaurant and he's like, Don't I know you? <laughs> no, no, no. No, and then, uh, so I did that. And then uh, I did, um, I was, was maitre d' for uh, fine dining establishments. And uh, yeah, from there I opened up a restaurant, uh, moved to Austin, uh, moved to Austin touring with a band called the Dirty River Boys. Okay, what kind of music was that? They're uh, Red Dirt music, so Texas country. Okay. And they're coming up and doing great things now, really happy with them, but yeah, so I went to Austin and liked it, so I stayed. And uh, moved back to El Paso to open up a craft beer bar, uh, saw post. These guys were doing this really new concept, and I moved back to help them open that up, and just as a head bartender, and it was a blast. And from there, everything kind of transitioned into uh, the website, and then the, the pizzeria. Yeah. You ever think about taking all the knowledge and experience from the Southwest that you've had and bringing it back to the 716? Oh, the 716? Of course, man. I've missed home. Uh, you know, I don't know what it was, uh, just a sense of like trying to detach myself from childhood or whatever, but I needed to like kind of get out there and experience. Yeah, and, you know, prove that I wasn't going to fucking die or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, just so kind of doing all right. Yeah, I mean, doing all right, but uh, yeah, no, I, you know, I grew up. I've got two little cousins that have bo been born since. Uh, you know, I still have so much family back here. So yeah, how is the fam? Fam's great. Yeah, yeah. Dave, my brother David's got two. Well, one girl and a second on the way. Wow. And my other brothers in the Air Force in Utah. My dad's doing great. Uh, cool. It's, yeah, for sure. My dad's uh, got Betty Dixon candies now. Oh. Uh, it, you know, if you not not really uh, familiar with. Yeah, it's uh, they've got like a candy shop next to the Bonton in the mall, like, seasonally. I'll have to check it out. Got to check it out. It's good candy. It's like Betty Dixon's like a classic yeah. chocolatier. I'm, I'm going to be a little plug stuff. for you, Papa Gertz. And yeah, that's right. Any, anybody else you want to shout out or give a plug to? Yeah, shout out to my boy Blue. No, I don't know, Jimmy T. What's up, dog? Let's, let's shout out <laughs> Jimmy T. What do you think? Well, all right, you know, you introduced me to Jimmy T when we were young. Yeah. Uh, the beard, his beard game he is, is really, uh, Yeah. let's he, talk about Jimmy T's beard game. You know what You know what he needs? He needs beard oil. If he had a little bit of beard oil, that shit would be, it would be, he, he'd look like a god. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad, is it? Is he's got a fucking fantastic beard, but yeah. <laughs> I really hope you watch this. <laughs> I really hope you, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you. <laughs> so I'm gonna beat up with him right after. Uh, so, are okay, you? I got something for you, boy. No, so, no, for sure. <laughs> Lily, do you guys have a ukulele here? Right, well, listen, we're gonna get it tuned. We're gonna do a little jam session.
come back home after getting his heart ripped out. Telling these complete stranger things that they don't need to know, but he do a good job anyhow. Hey Mick, I love the ukulele. Excuse me, ukulele. Pronunciation ain't everything to me.